Hi, I'm Michael Day, a teacher, nature photographer, traveler. This video is about a trip to Serengeti National Park and an opportunity to uh, experience the greatest migration of large animals in the world. Uh, at the end of the video, there is some information about my blog and how to contact me. If you want to look at other travels, I hit that subscribe button down in the lower right hand corner. Thanks for watching. When Susan and I first visited East Africa in 2004, we didn't come to see the great wildebeest migration. We visited the Masamara National Reserve in southwest Kenya, primarily to satisfy a 30 year itch or urge to go on safari and to spend a few nights in an intimate safari camp on a private concession that Susan found. The Balalur Camp, Kishwa Tembo, operated then by Conservation Corporation Africa, based out of South Africa. The month was June, the long rains stopping a few weeks earlier. The airstrip we landed at was just a few miles from our camp and just outside the Masamara National Reserve. From airstrip to camp, we saw giraffes, zebras, and adorable little tommy gazelles. Later that evening, we saw elephants, lovely little birds, cult bee eaters, lovely big birds, gray crowned cranes, and lions. That night, while preparing for bed, Susan and I were just speechless. The first day of our safari was much more than anticipated. We were hooked. The next few days, we observed lots more lions, zebras, giraffes, and elephants as well as topis, elons, impalas, grants gazelles, warthogs, hippos, cheetahs, crocodiles, an assortment of fascinating birds like the secretary bird and the wildebeest. It was during this first trip to East Africa we learned about the great wildebeest migration on the Serengeti and its relationship to the Masamara. Since Susan and I first visited the Badalur I've returned to East Africa eight times, sometimes with Susan in 2006, 8, and 16, sometimes as part of Adult Education Wildlife Safari programs to Kenya in 2007, 13, and 17. One time just with friends to the Serengeti, a boys trip in 2009, and most recently with my favorite safari guide Peter Ninyaro and our first adult education wildlife safari program in Tanzania and that was in 2019. My travels to East Africa generally covered the period of early June to early July, each visit lasting a few weeks. During all these visits the great wildebeest migration served as backdrop. During the adult education wildlife safari programs to Kenya our final safari camp was always located in central Masamara with the hope of experiencing the arrival of the migration. What is the Great Wildebeest Migration? Where and when does it happen? Why should we care? The Great Wildebeest Migration is the annual journey of a collection of animals that for some cover over 1,000 miles, moving clockwise generally from the southern Serengeti Plains to the lush Masamara grasslands in the north and then return. Nearly two million animals participate, one and a half million wildebeest, 200,000 plain zebras, a couple hundred thousand Thompson and Grant's gazelles, as well as Topi, Hartebeest, and Elans. The migration coincides with changes in weather. In East Africa, there are really two seasons, wet and dry. Wet in November and December due to sporadic rains, and again wet from March to May, when the major and vital rainy season occurs, and when many animals, especially the, the young, 
grow strong on grasses, and prepare for the long dry season ahead. The migration basically is the movement from dry to moist habitats. And to do so, crosses two major rivers, the Mara and the Grimetti. For the wildebeest, birthing season is January to March, when typically half a million wildebeest are born. Calves standing within three to seven minutes of birth, nursing for most of their first year, and following their mothers during the long and challenging migration ahead. Death surrounds those who participate in this long journey. During the annual migration, an estimated 250,000 wildebeest and 30,000 zebra die from predation, as well as from thirst, hunger, and exhaustion. About 3,000 lions and lots and lots of Nile crocodiles live in the Serengeti ecosystem. Where and when does the Great Migration happen? Home to the migration is Serengeti National Park, located in northwest Tanzania. Serengeti National Park was established in 1951, ten years before Tanzanian independence from the British. In size, it is larger than Yellowstone National Park in the United States. Yellowstone stretches about 100 miles north to south, roughly 60 miles east to west. Serengeti National Park stretches 120 miles north to south, 90 miles east to west. And if you add the Masamara to the north, included in the route wildebeest and companions take during the migration, you add a bit more to its size. The word Serengeti comes from the Maasai word Serengeti, meaning the place where the land runs on forever. And it does. What do travelers find when they visit the Serengeti? It is safe to say visitors to the Serengeti are greeted by the largest assortment of wildlife in the world, including ground hornbills, plain zebra and jackals, Maasai giraffe and elons, baboon and topis, tommy gazelles, ostrich and secretary birds, brevets and crowned cranes, cheetahs. Four members of the Big Five are often encountered. The lion, leopard, elephant, and cape buffalo. It is increasingly rare to see the fifth member of the group, the rhino, due to big game hunters and poachers attracted by its valuable horns. Fortunately, you can see black rhinos in the Masamara. Susan and I saw a mother and calf in 2008. And in September 2019, a small population of black rhinos were relocated to the Serengeti. The ugly five are here as well. The always amusing warthog, the severely unattractive marabou stork, the lapid-faced vulture, the generally vilified spotted hyena and the wildebeest, who in appearance looks like it was assembled by committee. Long face of a grasshopper, horns of a buffalo, mane and tail of a horse, body of an antelope. The name wildebeest is Dutch for wild beast. Another name used is gnu, a name given because of the sounds it makes. Gnu, gnu. Gunu, Gunu. For me, the wildebeest is among the noblest and heroic animals I know. This animal is the ultimate survivor. For hundreds of thousands of years, the wildebeest remains the main actor in the Great Migration. For visitors to Serengeti National Park or to the Masamara National Reserve, hoping to experience either the actual migration or large herds of grazing wildebeest and zebras, when should they come? 
What follows is an overall guide. Generally, beginning in January and extending through March, visitors find the massive population of wildebeest back home, grazing that home range on the southern Serengeti. Then in April, as the southern grasses slowly dry, some herds begin to journey north. A little note to self, March through May can be tricky times to travel in the Serengeti due to muddy roads caused by recent rains. June and July are likely the most popular tourist travel months for experiencing the Great Migration. As the wildebeest now move north and west following the Ambelageti River, they are joined by plain zebras, where a fascinating symbiosis occurs, actually satisfying to three animals, protection for all due to the large numbers, and grass consumption. Zebras taking the bulky heads of grass, wildebeest then taking the main stalks, and the much smaller Thompson gazelle, who follows the herds, cleaning up on the shortened grass left behind. I like to plan my trips to the Serengeti for mid-June, hoping to experience the herds while still following the Mbalageti River. Spending a few nights at Mbalageti Lodge just above the river, in 2019, we arrived at the lodge at the same time as numerous herds of zebras and wildebeest. By September and October, most of the migration herds have arrived at the Masamara and are enjoying rich fields of red oat grass. Some wildebeest and zebras are early arrivals and began trickling into the area in June, taking a more direct northern route to the Mara. But whether the wildebeest and their companions took the longer or shorter route to the Mara, along the way, their first river crossings occurred. Life and death situations. This is where the clutching jaws of massive crocodiles await. These crossings are what attract many tourists to both the Serengeti and the Mara, and guests are seldom disappointed by the opportunity to witness a crossing, though some may be a tad traumatized by the results. Susan was. The rivers are also a great place to see hippos. <laughs> Then, generally sometime in January, the migration begins its long, slow journey home. I've spent some time during the month of June at Klein's camp in the northeast Serengeti and have observed some migration herds taking the shorter route north to the Mara. Klein's is a lovely camp located in a great spot for also experiencing the homeward bound migration. So is experiencing the great wildebeest migration on the Serengeti something added to a to-do list primarily because of the beauty, spectacle, and drama provided? Or might there be another reason as well? I believe there is another reason, both scientific and cultural. It's a feeling of familiarity the human species may have when visiting the Serengeti. That feeling deep inside that I've been here before. Just south of the entrance to the Serengeti National Park is Old Divide Gorge, rich in fossils and early man sites. One of the most important sites in the world for the study of primitive human beings. Within its museum, founded by British paleoanthropologist Mary Leakey, are the fossilized tracks of the earliest walking human, Homo erectus that occurred some two million years ago. These human ancestors likely experienced firsthand the earliest forms of the great wildebeest migration. Another reminder of times past, our human roots and modern interactions with the world is the opportunity to interact with the Hadza people on the shores of Lake Yasi, just south of Serengeti National Park. The Hadza are among Africa's first peoples, 
descendants of Tanzania's earliest hunter-gatherers. Though small in number, the Hutsa remain a hunter-gatherer culture. They have likely occupied this area of Tanzania for thousands of years, and their ancestors likely hunted during the Great Wildebeest Migration, just a short distance to the north. That's our video. Both as a photographer and traveler, I'm extremely fortunate to have visited East Africa as often as I have. I'm currently planning my next visit. A few years back, I put together an illustrated 133-page wildlife safari photo journal. If you'd like a copy or would like to contact me, visit my blog at michael-day.org. The blog address may also be a useful site for those who would like to further examine the link between adult education, wonder, curiosity, adventure, and travel. Happy travels!